Hi everyone, my name is David and I'm a musician and I've played on a lot of albums in my day, but on Thursday, December 21st, I am releasing my first solo album. It'll be a collection of songs that I've released on this YouTube channel, in addition to some songs that you haven't heard yet, but I figured that I would share the experience with you all and show you after you've gotten your tracks mastered, I've mastered them myself, but you could send them off to an external mastering engineer, you may need to do some final cleanup. And a mastering engineer will take care of this, but you may have to do it yourself. So in case you do, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to finalize your tracks for sending them off to iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, Deezer, whatever it is that you use. This is the tutorial for you, so let's do it. Okay, so we're here in Cubase, and I have all of my tracks, and these are the masters. And I won't get into the mastering process today. I've done a video on that, and I'll leave a link to it in one of these corners here. My mastering setup is basically just EQ, a multi-band compressor if I feel like the track needs it. Sometimes I'll saturate with tube or tape saturation, and then I'll ensure the proper loudness with a limiter. And I've detailed all that in the video, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're gonna get into, let's say you have your masters, and you're ready to release an album and you have something that looks like this. This is all of your tracks, but you wanna decide on the track order that you're going to submit to iTunes or Spotify or whatever. Well, here's my pro tip number one. Use shuffle mode because you can just shuffle the order of tracks however you'd like. And then let's say that you are trying to take off, trim some space from the end of a track or something, like this track. And I wanted to trim some of the end. Well, I can trim it like this and everything snaps to it, which is actually pretty handy. So yeah, shuffle is my first pro tip. My next pro tip is if you notice my record format, I have 44.1, 24-bit. That's what I recorded the whole album in. Now I will export these in 44.1, 24-bit after I've decided on the order and then I will upload them to my distribution service at 44.124 bit and stay tuned on Wednesday. I'll do a tutorial about how to go from having a bunch of files on your hard drive to having an album on Spotify. So stay tuned for that. And I'll leave a link up here when it finally does come out. Uh, I'm going to do that in a couple days, but for now, this is just the finalization process. I had 44.124 bit, but Let's say I wanted copies of this that I would submit for media composition, like it was going to be used in film, television, commercial, video game. Well, I would want to actually export all of these files, all these songs at 48 kilohertz sample rate, 24 bit bit depth. And so what I will do is actually, because I recorded these to 44.124, that's how I'll export them and that's how I'll send them to the services. But I will upscale them to 4824 in case they need to be used in media because that's the appropriate sample rate and bit depth for media composition. Now, why didn't I record in 4824? Well, there's a very simple reason for that. I use Spotify like all day, every day to listen to music, to reference tracks while I'm working on music. And Spotify, the application wasn't working well when I had Cubase set to 4824, but it was working flawlessly when I had it set to 44.124. And CDs are 44.116. So this is actually, it's CD quality sampling rate with the higher bit depth. So I think that the sound quality is fine. It's all gonna get converted to AAC or MP3 or whatever streaming services use when it gets uploaded uh, to my distributor. So I figure it'll all come out in the wash. It's not that big a deal. That's why I use 44.124 so that I could listen to Spotify while I was recording. But tip number one, use shuffle to move tracks around and you will be thankful for that for sure. Uh, tip number two, Export at whatever you recorded at, but you should not be recording at any lower than 44.1 kilohertz, and you should not be recording at 16-bit bit depth. That just doesn't make any sense in today's day and age. But on export, I'm using cycle markers so that I don't have to do this a million times. What I do is simply set up these cycle markers like so, and add in cycle markers, hit this, and then you can add a description. So this is the name of the track title, at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, master. You can see, be thankful, final, master. Well, if you add descriptions to your cycle markers, ID two, be thankful, ID three, along the way. Well, if you add those descriptions to your cycle markers, you can come in here to your uh, export screen and you can 
click this box, export cycle markers. I have all my cycle markers labeled with track titles. We can change the naming scheme. And we can change those to a custom scheme here. And those custom scheme, that'll be cycle marker name. And let's say I just, let me just give a random folder for this. And I think I'll actually do this as MP3 so I can show you something after this. So I'll do an MP3 at the highest kilobit rate and we'll export it. And as you can see, it'll export cycle ranges, uh, cycle range one, cycle range two, and the file names will be whatever you gave the name to for the cycle markers. This can save you a whole heck of a lot of time. Now, like I said, I am distributing this to my digital distributor in 44.124, but I'm making copies in 48 kilohertz 24 bit for media composition in case these songs ever need to be used in film, television, video game, or commercial. And I'm also exporting MP3s. And the reason I would export MP3s is because MP3 support full metadata tagging. And even though they're compressed, the file sizes are smaller, so you can send them very quickly to someone over email. You're not faffing around with OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox links. You can just attach it as an email file. And that is a huge lifesaver if someone's like, don't you have a song like that? Instead of saying, oh yeah, check out my cloud storage service where I have a wave file File, you can just say, no, yeah, I do. Check out my MP3. And when you send them the MP3, all of the metadata is there. And I will show you how to get the metadata there after these get done exporting, which they just have. So let's pull this down. And here's the MP3 folder. So now I can go in and edit this metadata in here. This is along the way. This is the third track I want on the album. So on Windows, this will be different on a Mac, but to edit metadata, it's key when you're sending out MP3 files. Getting your metadata in order is key when you're sending out MP3 files. So in order to do that, I would right click on this, I'd come to properties and I'd click details. The title of the song is actually along the way. I know that because of the file name is along the way. There's no subtitle. I think the comments would be David at my email address which is talkingleafmedia.com. Contributing artist, David Harper. Album artist, David Harper. Since I did this whole song myself, I don't have to give anybody else credit. Uh, we'll call the genre folk. Close enough. Um, the publisher is me, Talking Leaf Media. And all this stuff is kind of nice. Uh, specify composer. You can put in the composer, the conductor, the mood, the initial key, the beats per minute, and it helps music supervisors when they have all this metadata, when they say, I want a down-tempo folk song, or I want a mid-tempo hard rock song, to be able to have all of this metadata at their fingertips just in an email. So you can, uh, I would advise you to go through and tag all the metadata, keep MP3s of any album you have so you can send them quickly. And then you should also have 48 kilohertz, 24 bit uh, mastered or exported file versions of your music just in case they ever get option for use in media. So these have been my quick tips for finishing an album. I would say use the shuffle mode to get your track order straight and use shuffle mode to sort of edit beginning and ends of songs. Use the cycle markers so that you can uh, organize and export everything in one fell swoop and export in whatever format you're going to upload to your digital distributor, export in 48 kilohertz 24 bit and export an MP3 and go through and put all the metadata tagging you can on that because that's what you'll be sending around. That's what'll be floating around out there in the wild. And you wanna make sure that if someone hears your song and they wanna use it, they know how to find you. So I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and tune in in a couple days because I'll show you how to go from your heart hard drive to Spotify and iTunes and another tutorial coming up. I'll link to that up here in the corner. Uh, but until next time, everyone, take care of yourselves and have a great day. Bye.